fishing for me is kind of just an excuse to get outside and be on the river more than anything. I think the reason why I fly fish is primarily to look at the fish itself. For other people, it might be for like getting their personal best or to get a new species off the list, right? Or just to catch as many fish as they can per day. Um, for me, it's pretty much just like, to see the fish. My name is Anna Lay, and I am a fisheries biologist and an environmental educator, and also the founder and owner of Grayling Education. Grayling Education is a small environmental education consulting business to help bridge conservation and education and science together, make it more intersectional and fun for people. For example, like fly fishing would be used as a tool to talk about water quality and watershed and also just like place-based learning. So, you know, when you learn about fly fishing, you're focusing more on the casting and the gear. And so with grayling education, it's focusing more on like the insects and the water quality portion um, and also like the conservation and how to be a better steward through fly fishing. in Ennis, Montana. First day was a really beautiful day. It was like in the mid 80s and super sunny and just beautiful <laughs> puffy clouds, just like clouds that a kid would draw with a bright blue sky. We were on a section of the Madison River. You know, with anglers and scientists, we want to do our best to manage or like handle the fish um, and really like not disturb their like slime coating, their mucus coating, and also have them in a box where they're still in the water and we can safely view them rather than them thrashing around the net or like being, you know, too exposed to the air all the time. And also I have a really short attention span when it comes to fishing. So maybe I'll like pick up a rod for like an hour and a half or so, and then just like put it down and go frolic and tromp around because I'm in waders and I feel like invincible and I want to just pick up rocks and look at macroinvertebrates and insects and look at birds that are flying by. We got to go fish an alpine lake, uh, which was previously stocked with grayling and it was a really fun and beautiful hike. It was a lot more mountainous where there was like sagebrush around and then open sections of prairie. And then it was just like this really cute like inlet lake that was a little bit mucky and like emerald green. The snow melt had accumulated water this year, which was really great to see. It's starting to rain. It's raining. Well, sometimes I tell myself if I don't catch a fish, the fish just don't want to be caught today, right? Because you're doing everything you can to present the fly. <laughs> <laughs> You don't pay attention to it and you catch a fish. <laughs> Woohoo! Second grayling ever. Um, before that, I, it took me three years to find a grayling, even if my friends took me to stock ponds and stock lakes. It took me three years, and during that time, I was going through PTSD and healing from it. And so it's, it's almost exactly a year later that I get to re catch a grayling, which is pretty special. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> We did it! We did it! <laughs> Being with a fly rod actually quieted my mind a, a, a little bit, and that kind of gave me some semblance of like normalcy and sanity, which really, really helped with getting back into the environment and nature and just kind of like tackling something that was really hard for me to do for a while.
Typically when I go outdoors or fishing, I like to grab my camera with me, um, especially with my massive like 200 to 500 millimeter lens for wildlife photography. So being able to capture these like wildlife or these places that I get to go and tell a story about them through the lens of conservation education can really hopefully like inspire someone to get outdoors, but more in their backyards or push against the boundary a little bit to go explore. Education is really important for conservation just because you can't really protect or care about wanting to conserve if you don't know anything about it. Seeing, you know, what the region is like and um, their habitat and what's happening to it can really have you care a little bit more about the environment that you're interacting with. I feel like if you are able to learn maybe two facts and take away something new each and every single day, it opens your perspectives to something completely new and it shifts your mindset to, you know, the box that you've been in for so long.